This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at calculating binding energy. In the previous video, we saw that the mass of a nucleus is slightly less than the sum of the masses of the nucleons that make up the nucleus, which is known as the mass defect. For example, the mass of a helium nucleus is slightly less than the sum of the masses of the nucleons that make up the nucleus. The missing mass has been converted directly into energy. This energy is the binding energy of the nucleus, which is the energy required to separate the nucleus into its constituent nucleons. So the mass of the nucleons that make up a nucleus equals the mass of the nucleus plus the mass that's been converted to the binding energy. To calculate the binding energy, we can use the Einstein mass energy equivalence relationship, which is E equals mc squared. E is the energy in joules, m is the mass defect in kilograms, and c is the speed of light. Next, we'll calculate the binding energy of the helium nucleus. So we use the equation E equals mc squared. In a previous video, we calculated the mass defect of a helium nucleus, which was 5.03280 times 10 to the negative 29 kilograms. And we multiply this by the speed of light squared. This gives us a binding energy of 4.53 times 10 to the negative 12 joules per nucleus. For one mole of helium nuclei, we multiply the value for one nucleus by the Avogadro constant to give us 2.73 times 10 to the 9 kilojoules per mole. In our next example, we'll calculate the binding energy of the copper nucleus. Once again, we use the equation E equals mc squared. The mass defect of a copper nucleus is 9.79556 times 10 to the negative 28 kilograms. And we multiply this by the speed of light squared, which gives us a binding energy of 8.82 times 10 to the negative 11 joules per nucleus. For one mole of copper nuclei, we multiply the value for one nucleus by the Avogadro constant to give us 5.31 times 10 to the 10 kilojoules per mole. 